Hey Fit and Healthy friends, are you planning to do a sprint triathlon and you want some nutrition tips on how to fuel well to perform your best on race day? I'm Holly, I'm a registered dietitian and sports nutritionist for endurance athletes. And in this video, I'm going to recap my sprint triathlon that I just did and what I did to prepare for and fuel on race day to perform well. These tips will help you to get the energy you need and avoid GI upset so you can enjoy your sprint triathlon, whether it's your first or you're a seasoned athlete. Avoiding GI upset or stomach problems when you're racing is one of the biggest concerns that a lot of athletes face because it can really ruin your whole race for you and make you feel awful instead of great when you're racing. So one tip to avoid GI upset is to follow what's called a low FODMAP diet, which is largely, to make it a bit more simpler, a low fiber diet. There are some differences between the two, but if you want to really understand what a low FODMAP diet is and how it can prevent GI upset, I actually have a whole course on that called A Runner's Guide to Reducing Gastrointestinal Symptoms. You can find that in the link below. I will link that course so that you can go through all the details of what that diet entails and what it would look like leading up to a race. But to sort of summarize, what I did was three days prior to race day, I started a low FODMAP diet. When you have some of these foods in your digestive system, they can last in there for one to three days. And this is why three days prior to the race, I started a low fiber and low FODMAP diet so that it would give time for any of those foods to clear out of my body so that on race day, they wouldn't cause any problems. Often when we're racing at these really high intensities and we're nervous and we're stressed, those foods, if they're still sitting in our intestines, can draw water, create gas, and cause more problems than they may on a regular day. So if you want to ensure that you are avoiding any of those weird foods that could cause any triggers, try going on a one to three day low FODMAP diet. And again, you can get all the details on that in my course because it is pretty particular. It's very specific. You'll even have to eliminate certain things like garlic and onion for a few days, which can get a bit tricky. But if you have a very sensitive stomach, these things can help you. A general rule of thumb though, is to avoid any high fiber foods in the days leading up to your race and on the day of your race. What about carb loading? Typically speaking, before any endurance event, like a triathlon or a running race, most athletes are gonna want to carb load, which is where a few days leading up to the race, you eat a lot of carbohydrates while also reducing your exercise and the intensity of exercise so that you're burning less energy and glycogen and you're storing more glycogen so that you have more ready for you on race day. However, if you're only doing a sprint triathlon, a carb load may not be necessary. Generally speaking, if you're racing less than 90 minutes, you don't really need to carb load because your body will have enough glycogen stored for that event. This may vary a little bit depending on the intensity and what you've been eating in the days leading up to that race. But if you think that you'll be done with your race in about 90 minutes or less, then you don't really need to worry about piling in lots of carbs. However, there are some exceptions to this rule. When I approached this race, I decided to do a mini carb load because I don't often eat as many carbohydrates on a day-to-day -day basis as I should be, which means that I may not have as much glycogen stored in my muscles and liver as I should if I were eating the proper amount of carbohydrates. So while I didn't do a true carb load leading into the race, about two days prior to the race, after I started that low fiber, low FODMAP diet, I also then started to eat more carbohydrates than I typically do, which really just meant that I was being more intentional with having maybe extra oats in the morning and extra rice at lunch and extra pasta at dinner or extra potatoes and eating carbohydrate snacks throughout the day versus something maybe like a handful of almonds that doesn't have as many carbohydrates. If you want to learn more about carb loading though and how it works and when you should do it and how to implement it in different types of foods, I have a free carb load guide on my website that you can download and I will put that link down in the description as well. Now some tips on race day fueling, which can be very tricky. This definitely requires practice. So prior to doing your sprint triathlon, have at least one or two days where you get up early and you practice eating early in the morning, a few hours before you go out for your training session. And if you can try to do something very similar to a sprint triathlon, do the swim or most of the swim, most of the bike and most of the run kind of back to back, just like you would do in a race. This will help you know a little bit better what it might feel like, how difficult it might be to eat very early in the morning and approximately how much time you need to digest your food in the morning prior to swimming. This will also help you to see if the foods that you eat in the morning impact you throughout the race. Pay attention to if they give you energy or if they end up making you feel bloated or they slosh around in your stomach or it was 
too much food or it was not enough food. Make sure to practice your pre-race nutrition as well as your in-race nutrition. So for myself, it is very difficult to eat on race morning. I'm typically very nervous and it's hard for me to get much down at all. If I'm able to eat, I like to eat about three hours before the race because that gives me adequate time to digest it and feel like I have a fairly empty stomach so I'm not gonna have any stomach upset throughout the race. Generally speaking, how much you should eat race morning depends on how soon before you're racing and your body weight. So if you want to better know how much you should be eating, Prior to a race, this is also included in that course that I mentioned earlier on that runner's guide to reducing gastrointestinal symptoms. Even though the focus is GI upset, there is a whole chapter in the course just about race fueling, regardless of whether you have GI upset or not. So I use that guide to help me figure out how much to eat prior to a race. Now for me, what the science says and what the ideal amount of food prior to a race is, I cannot handle. It is way too much food for me. So on my race morning, I just had a small little snack from the company called Bobo's. And what I like about these is they have a lot of calories and a lot of carbohydrates in a very small package. So it's dense, it's not full of water, it's not going to fill up my stomach, but it gives me some of the carbohydrates that I need. Another thing that I have done before and you can do if you don't digest food too well is you can use something like powdered carbohydrates in your drink. So I did race morning, I had a, a water bottle that I put some electrolytes and some powdered carbohydrates in to help me get a little bit car more carbohydrates without having to eat anything because it's again very difficult for me to eat on race morning but drinking something is not so difficult. You can also take something like a gel so I had some of those on hand as well along with things like chews or blocks that you can eat again to just have a dense small amount of sugar and carbohydrates. So any of those things can work prior to the race. If you're too nervous and worried to eat you can always eat about 30 grams or so of carbohydrates right before the race, maybe 15 to 30 minutes prior. And this difficulty with eating on race morning, that's part of the reason why I did a little bit of a mini carb load leading up to the race. I plan to not eat too many carbohydrates on race morning. If you're someone who can eat a full meal and feel great on race day, then you probably don't need to worry so much about having all those extra carbs in the days before. Again, especially if you're only doing a sprint and you'll be done in a fairly short amount of time. So just before I had to leave transition, I had some caffeine. I had brought a little bit of espresso with me. I had some of that and I had a couple of cliff blocks just to give me a little bit more carbohydrate. Again, because I hadn't eaten that much in the morning and I was actually starting to get a bit hungry. Here's a note on caffeine. I recently found out that I am a slow caffeine metabolizer through a genetic test. And what this means is for people like me, sometimes high amounts of caffeine that have been shown to improve in performance can actually hinder performance in people that metabolize caffeine slowly. So I didn't want to do a lot of caffeine. Typically we recommend about three to six grams, milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight. That can actually upset my stomach and hinder my performance a little bit. So I just had a little bit of espresso to kind of help wake me up, give me that little bit of energy but not hinder me in any way. So it can be helpful if you're not sure how much caffeine to have to find out if you are a slow or fast metabolizer of caffeine, which can be done through a genetic test. And I actually offer some, uh, not the genetic testing, but interpretation of a genetic test that specifically looks at nutrition for athletes. So if you want to find out more about that, please contact me at renewalfitcoach at gmail.com. Also regarding caffeine, I had it right before the swim and just before leaving transition so that it would kind of start to kick in around the bike. I also do this because again, I tend to be very nervous on race morning. So if I'm drinking coffee throughout the morning, it's going to make me feel that much more jittery. And again, it's for some people, if you overdo caffeine, it can end up causing GI upset, which is another thing I talk about in the course that I mentioned before. So the next time I fueled after the swim was on the bike. My preferred way of getting nutrition in is by using powdered carbohydrates and mixing that into water in my water bottle on the bike. This way I'm getting hydration and I'm getting carbohydrates in a way that's not going to really sit in my stomach, cause GI upset or make me feel too full. And I can properly proportion how much hydration I'm getting and how much carbohydrates. And that's just very easy for me to sip. It doesn't take time. Typically in a sprint triathlon, you are moving quickly. There's not a lot of time to eat or pull out gels or blocks or things like that. So I keep some cliff blocks or precision nutrition chews in my bike bag. And then I have most of my nutrition in my water bottle. 
So what I did was I sipped on that water throughout the bike. And then I had a couple of those blocks right near the end of the bike to help me through the run. So the last part of a triathlon, of course, is the run. Typically, I don't take much nutrition on the run. I've gotten enough by then. And that's usually when GI upset will start to occur because of all of the movement and the sloshing and everything you've been through so far. And you're going very fast on the run typically. So I just carry a small water bottle with me, usually with maybe a little bit of electrolytes. Then it's there if I want it. And if I don't need it, I can just take plain water from the stations. So what about post-race nutrition? A lot of people forget about after the race because we're so focused on getting through the race and feeling properly beforehand. However, if you can get in a good meal and lots of carbohydrates and water throughout the rest of the day, this can help you recover faster. Now for a lot of people, a sprint isn't a huge effort to recover from, but every little bit helps just get your energy back and help your body to recover after you just put it through quite a bit of stress. So what I like to do at any race is if I can take a ready to drink protein shake and just keep it in the car, or in my bag if I'm able to keep it at transition and have room for it. So I'll take a couple of these for me and my husband so that as soon as we're able to get back to transition or get back to the car, we can just drink one of these. Typically we use Orgain, but there are lots of different brands that will give you plenty of protein right away. So around 20, 30, maybe even 40 grams of protein is great to have right after the race. And then that can get you through to when you get to go out and have your wonderful celebration lunch. That'll probably be a much bigger meal to fill you up for the rest of the day and help you to recover. So here's a question for you if you have raced before. I just mentioned a few of the things that I like to do, but there are so many different ways that you can fuel for a race. What do you like to do? What works for you? Comment down below what your favorite race nutrition is. We all need help figuring this out sometimes. Different things work for different people. So comment below and help each other out with some different race nutrition ideas. Or if you have questions about this, post a comment down below and hopefully someone else can answer that question for you. So I hope this video was helpful to you and gave you some ideas and tips on how to fuel for a sprint triathlon. And again, if you want to learn more about carb loading, how it works, when you should use it for not only a sprint triathlon, but any level of endurance race, you can get, grab my free carb load guide from my website, which will be linked below. And if you want to learn more about race nutrition and what to eat leading into a race to fuel your body well and fuel your training and help to reduce GI upset, both in training and in racing, then check out my runner's guide to reducing gastrointestinal symptoms, which is a video course that also gives you an ebook that you can download with all of the information so you can just have a handy reference guide anytime you need it. That link is also down below. So thank you so much for watching. If this is helpful to you, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And until the next one, blessings on your health and fitness journey.